Hey everyone, here we go with getting the 1.8T Audi TT head back onto the upgraded block using the Victor Reigns head gasket kit and also doing the dreaded timing belt service using a Gates comprehensive kit. Before installing the head gasket, you have to ensure there's an oil-free surface. Now I know this step isn't required, but I like to spray a copper gasket onto the head gasket before setting it down. There are these two posts on the exhaust side of the block that help to easily locate the head gasket into the right spot. Drop it down, then it's time to prep the head for installation. You can't really start this part up because of the locating posts. Again, do your best to get all of the oil from the mating surface of the head and then offer the head back up to the block. The two locating posts have their receiving ends in the underside of the block and again, it's impossible to get the location wrong due to those locating posts. Once the head's on, you can drop the 10 head bolts into their locations. They're M10 PolyDrive 120mm long bolts. Now the next part is super important to note. There's a very specific procedure to follow when talking the head bolts. Tightening starts in the middle and you work your way around the bolts in a crisscross pattern, tightening down in several stages. So you saw that the first stage is tightening by hand until the bolts grab. The second stage is to follow the pattern and tightening down to 40 newton meters. Then with the breaker bar, follow the pattern again and do our 180 degree rotation or split this into a round of two 90 degree final turns. So that's the easy part done and it's time to focus our attention to the timing belt. First, transfer markings over from the old timing belt onto the brand new one. Align the teeth of the belt and scroll around until you reach your marks and copy the marks over from the old belt onto the new belt. Now, I don't know how I missed the mark right next to the arrow at the beginning, so just ignore that and I do go back to it later on. Before putting the timing belt on, triple check the timing on the head and the block at that they're lined up to their marks, meaning it's at top dead center. I had this busted intake cam sensor so I quickly changed that over. Along with that, I serviced the water pump and installed the new tensioner and pulley assembly. All of the small black bolts that you see are torqued up to 50 newton meters and the pulley's big bolt, which uses an 8mm Allen key, is spec'd up to 27 newton meters. Now this is the fun part, joking it's definitely not fun, installing the timing belt. Now what makes this difficult is that the belt becomes so super tight once you get all of but one section installed. You'll see this happen in a second. I like to line up the top mark and clamp at the exhaust cam gear. Work the belt down to fit over the water pump sprocket and then at the crank sprocket. You can see it's so tight that it's difficult to get it past the last bit over the water pump. To 
give some slack at the water pump side of the belt, I turn the crank counterclockwise slightly. You can see that it gives me more slack to the right side of the belt and this is where it takes some fiddling of the water pump sprocket to get the teeth aligned and then the belt should push on. Once on, you can start pressing it all the way in so it's got full contact to the sprockets. You might also need to go around in an even manner to get the belt on. Quadruple check that the markings align before pulling the pin on the tensioner. This is a fiddly job that can be made much, much easier if you were to use the 2 liter TFSI manual pulley setup, which I'll link to in the description below. Next is to remove all of the tape on the inlet and exhaust ports to test the timing. Manually turn the engine, watching the timing marks, making at least two revolutions, and then you want to recheck those timing marks are still aligned. If so, the timing is correct and that's all done. I also wanted to seal up the head next, but I didn't have the cam chain tensioner tool on hand, so I moved on to the manifolds. These are quite straightforward to install and I'll list the torque specs in the description below for the manifolds and everything else that I've done so far. I like to torque these from the inside and out using the same crisscross pattern. Now I'm not sure if that's important, but I do it anyway. Last on the list for this round of the restoration is to remove the OEM injectors and clean up the injector cups for the upgraded injectors, included from the broken engine. This should support the hybrid Franken turbo make the best power that it can. Talk these up and that's where I'm going to leave it for now. I'm so glad to be well past the halfway point and rebuilding instead of tearing apart. To see more of the Desert Green Pearl Audi TT Mark 1 Roadster restoration, click on the playlist and remember to like and subscribe for more updates. Thanks for watching.